I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you do chemistry at home in your everyday life for fun. Okay, Jam. So I had you do an experiment. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what you did? I can tell you what I did. So I took some used water bottles, like cheap water bottles, and cut them in half to, to have two disposable containers. And I took some school glue. That's some, a nice reusing of plastic. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I, I'm out of town and didn't have some reusable cups and didn't want to buy like a huge pack of them. You know what I mean? If they don't, you can't mm-hmm. just buy two, obviously. And so I had some school glue and some borax they told me to get, which I've heard of borax, never had to use it for any reason. <laughs> so I was like... Me neither. I was like, yeah. I hope I can find this. This seems like one of those things that's like old school... Um, like hope it's still at the supermarket maybe it is who actually buys it still um was it at the supermarket it was yep nice i bought it just in time last night at like 11 50 p.m and the store closed at midnight so <laughs> wow that's kind of close yeah thanks meyer and i so i got some borax some school glue and i put um a tablespoon of water in each of the makeshift plastic cups and then i put a fourth a tablespoon of borax into one of the containers. And then I put a tablespoon of school glue in the other container. Mm-hmm. And then I stirred them up separately with some chopsticks. Nice, some chopsticks. Mm-hmm. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good disposable option. Mm-hmm. That's and not going to get messed up. Yeah. And they just were here. So it was perfect. I was like, they, I couldn't find, I mean, just, just, I had limited stuff, but it ended up being perfect. So stirred those all up and then mixed them together and stirred it up again. And it started getting very thick pretty quickly. Nice. And then got very globby and slimy so and gooey. Or the, so you made slime. Yes, so I made slime. Did you squeeze it out, the excess water? Like, did when did you transition to your hands? Um, I was going to go grab a paper towel to kind of, like, soak up some of the extra water. I stepped mm-hmm. away for a second. When I came back, it had stuck to the chopstick. And so I just oh. pulled up the chopstick, and all the slime came, and a lot of the excess water just stayed in the um, nice. bottom. So I really didn't have to do it, like, try, to, try that hard to get the extra water out. Nice. And uh, did you play with it? Was it fun? I did play with it, and it was fun. I was just like, this is so weird. Yay. Also, I didn't have any food coloring, which I talk about in the video when I was doing the um, experiment and recommended mm-hmm. other people do it because it also just kind of looks <laughs> really not very cool. It's just a white uh, relative to how cool it could look if you got really crazy and right. creative with it. Uh, it just is like a white blob, and it looks kind of just like, until you really mess with it, it's like, is that just a blob of glue still <laughs> so but it was really weird how how much the consistency changed i was very surprised yes so that is how you make slime mm-hmm. and the reason i picked this experiment today is because can you guess what the slime is is made up of on a molecular level wait today made up of hmm does it have something to do with like so, the season or the or the time of the year or something? Or the, it's on theme with what we've been chatting about lately. Oh, is it a polymer? It is a polymer. Nice. nice so nice, nice. what you did was make a slime out of polymer. There's other kinds of slime, but this one was polymer slime. Nice. So you don't have to get into this too much with your kids, but since we've been talking about polymers and polymer chains... We talked about how on chain link fences or when you weave a blanket, there's extra links and that makes it stronger, makes it more solid, solid Mm solidy. That's what we did here. So the borax interacts with the glue. Glue is already a polymer chain, but the borax interacts with the glue to cross link those polymer chains. Okay. And that's why it becomes more solid. What is borax? Like I could have probably just looked that up, but like what even is it? It's a salt. It's known as sodium borate, sodium tetraborate, or disodium tetraborate. So the formula is 
sodium. Mm -hmm. There's two positive sodium ions. Okay. And then there's what's called a polyatomic ion with four borons, five oxygens, and then four more OH groups, which is an alcohol with a minus charge called it hydroxy. I don't think that really matters to much people, but it's a salt. Okay. Is the best way to describe it. So it's basically some positive ions with some negative ions and they all hang out together. Nice. And I think the the borate part of it, that that part of the salt is the one that actually does the linking between the glue. Okay. I didn't go too in depth because I didn't figure parents would want to talk to their kids about that. Right, right. <laughs> and it's always hard to know how much people really want to know about the molecular side of this chemistry, but I figured just knowing that the borax cross links the pre-existing polymer chains in the glue mm-hmm. would be enough. So that's the chemistry behind it. Nice. Now, when you mixed the water with the glue, did it get a little bit more thin? Was it yeah. like a thinner solution? Okay. Yeah. So one good thing that you can do to get your kids engaged is always ask them questions and get them to make predictions. So you can ask your kids, what do you think is going to happen when we add this glue to this water? Mm-hmm. And what do you think is going to happen when we add this powder to this water? Now, what do you think is going to happen if we mix it together and get them to make those predictions? And that is, that is one of the best ways to get them invested in the outcome. Then I would also ask what color do you think it's going to be when you mix it together? So you could use a one or two drops of food coloring and it'll be a much lighter shade of that because of the white that already exists right. in there. So it'll be like a very light blue or a very light green. And this was also adapted from a video from the American Chemical Society, but the Scientific American had an article that had basically the same experiment, but they did three different ratios. So they made three different levels of crosslink polymer with different textures to it. Ah. So you could also go check that out. We'll link to that in our show notes. So that can maybe make it a little bit more interesting for older kids. Yeah. And then just let them play with the slime. Ask them to describe what it looks, how it feels like those observations are part of the scientific mindset, you know? So being able to look at something, think about it and describe it, that is a good skill to have. And then let them be curious. So if they ask, I wonder what happened if we do this, try it Mm -hmm. and let them see. If you want to make it a little bit more artistic, I've seen people take glitter and put it in the the slime. I've seen people take tiny toys and hide it in there. <laughs> there is a big trend for a while of making slime and selling it in the uh, teeny bopper. One of my friend's nieces got really into making slime and selling it. And she had one that had really tiny toys made out of donuts like her. Er, Really tiny donut oh, toys, okay. like very, very miniature donuts that were hard plastic, and she dispersed them in her slime. So it was like a donut slime. Yeah. It was very fun. <laughs> so <clears throat> you can do all kinds of stuff with your slime. That's so cool. I remember I don't I don't know what uh what version we made, but when I was in third grade, I made some slime. We had this like thing where we did it was always known in our school as the third grade market, and you'd learn about just, you know, the basics of economics and like you sell something, there's costs to what you make and then you sell right. it for a certain price and what you have left over is called profit. Like the very basic building blocks of business. That's fun. That they did the third grade market. Yeah, it was way fun. And everybody, like all the <laughs> other students, you know, would, would buy stuff and everything costs, you know, like less than a dollar. And mm-hmm. so everybody knows about it, especially when you're younger, you like go buy stuff and you're like, Oh, I can't wait till I'm in third grade and I'm going to go, make something cool and sell it and so i really wanted to make some slime and i don't know what uh recipe my mom looked up but we made some and we made it really like glittery and really crazy different colors and stuff and sold it in in little easter eggs containers of it oh and easter eggs that's a good container yeah it was perfect and they made it it made it really small but they Uh sold them for 50 cents or something like that but it was it was a lot of fun I, i was having flashbacks to that when i was playing with the slime earlier that's so fun that's a good story so see you might have kids that when they're grown up and parents they remember how much fun they had making slime in third grade that's really cool oh that's really fun now i will say some younger kids 
I've noticed get kind of freaked out by slime. They, they <laughs> really? some that if they're if they're probably two or three, mm-hmm. and they can communicate with you that you think they might think it's fun. A lot of them I've noticed don't want to get their hands dirty. Oh yeah. So and we'll do this later, but there's a cornstarch and water experiment, and a lot of kids look at that and say absolutely not to me until they're older. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to see when they're willing to do it because they don't. They're kind of weirded out by something that they don't recognize. Yeah. Interesting. Because I think it definitely changes at some point where there's an age where it's like getting messy starts being really appealing. Yes. Jumping some yes. puddles, that kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can always try it. Corn surgeon water is pretty low stakes. And even this borax and Elmer's glue is. And I would say really let them run with it as long as they're not going to explore something. This can maybe stick to clothes and stuff. Oh, yeah. So be careful about that kind of stuff, but let them try things out and you can always make more slime. So if they're ruining the slime, that does not matter because mm-hmm. you can get a pretty big amount of borax and just kind of yeah. go to town for pretty cheap. Yeah. If so, you're in the situation I was in and you couldn't find a smaller amount of borax, then you might have a lot of slime potential going on <laughs> because I have a big old box of borax now. <laughs> and like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. So I better just make more slime. Yeah, well, we could portion it out and give it to the neighborhood kids for Halloween instead of candy. That is a good idea. <laughs> Maybe not you know, this year, but next year. Yeah. One thing I was going to say, I actually say it in the video too, but my wife was kind enough to tell me that she's seen kids come in with um, like just skin irritation from the borax if they mm. don't wash their hands really well after handling it. And it wouldn't be every kid, I don't think, but she noticed that there started being an uptick in that. I guess maybe the experiment kind of got more popular again at some point. Yes, I think and, that's what's been happening with that lately. The kids are really into slime. Yeah. So she started seeing more kids come in that had had skin irritation. So just, she told me, and I mentioned it in the video too, that just make sure you wash your hands really well after handling it and maybe don't play with it for like hours and hours in straight or something like that. So, yeah, that's a good, that's a good input from our friend, the uh, pediatric nurse practitioner, friend and friend of the show. But if your kid has like sensitive skin or something, then it's probably better to, be, to play it safe a little bit. And also another PSA is you should throw this in the trash when you're done with it, not put it down the sink because it can clog up drains. Ooh, yeah. Dang, that would not be fun. Not at all. So don't let your kid shove it down the drain just to see what happens. Don't let them ruin <laughs> anything with it, but let them try things with it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that's it. That's our experiment for this week. Thanks for trying that out, Jam. Of course, of course. It was fun. Thanks for teaching me. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. And we'd like to give a special thanks to E. Robinson, who reviewed this episode. (laughs) 